Okay. I mean, hey, I think that's, <laughs> I feel like that's par for the course with us, right? Right. Well, Karen, fancy meeting you here. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, so, welcome to Beers and Biscuits. Nice. I like how my video is frozen. I was just going to say, was, <laughs> but it's a good picture of you. You like it's a nice it's not like a like a weird face you made, you know. So <laughs> I'll just talk to your frozen face. Nice. Nice. So welcome to Beers and Biscuits, a dog cast for the rest of us. I'm Nicole and I'm Karen. Grab a beverage, give your dog a biscuit and enjoy the conversation. So Karen, I'm excited for this episode. Um, kind of a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, but I feel like there was so much that we could have, like, we, pro we probably could have talked to Ken for hours, I feel like. Oh, easily. Yeah. His energy alone brought so much to this episode I feel like I was just like I want to bottle it and I want to have that much energy at the end of the day I'm jealous right. right and it's not like I mean obviously we don't like know know what he does but from describing what he does like I feel like that's probably such a physically demanding job as well as mentally demanding so to have that much oomph right at the end of the i mean day. to have that day job or i'm not sure if it's a day or a night job or both <laughs> and then at the same time have this whole other business helping dogs it, it's like i don't know how you do it i mean t teach me your ways because i go to bed at 7 30 <laughs> and he's still got like six more hours you know yeah well i mean 7 30 is, is kind of early <laughs> i know i'm i am i'm the old lady and i have no shame in it but i'm also just like there are days where i'm like oh i could probably get so much more done in my day but i just don't want to you know so you get up really <laughs> early though he yes, I mean, like true. your day is half over by the time i get up I know. Yeah. The other day when you texted me and you told me like, oh, I start at this time. I was like, what? I want, I want to start at that time. I was like, oh, I've already, I've already been up for six hours at that point. Like I'm so, so jealous. Yeah. But then, but I also like, I, I, I would go crazy if I was up and just like waiting around to like start. Not that that's what you're doing, but like I don't sleep in. So like I just get up and get going. But I feel like we are digressing <laughs> <laughs> as we do. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So getting back to Ken, um, yeah, I feel like this was a great, um, a great start of a discussion. I'm really glad we had him on, but I really feel like we're going to need to twist his arm and have him on a couple more times just because there's so much that like I would love to pick his brain about. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I feel like we all kind of had like, I don't want to say chaotic energy during this because I like, I don't, <laughs> I think that's like too extreme, but like we were just at least I felt like I was feeding off of his energy. So like we'd ask a question and then, or like anybody would ask a question and then the answer would take us to like seven different topics. <laughs> and then we'd ask like one question on one topic and then we get seven more and it was just, so you're absolutely correct. We could have him on over and over and over again. Absolutely. And it's really great too. He hit on a lot of important points that I feel like it is really nice to hear a say, especially in this industry that, you know, we are dominated by women, but generally speaking, there, are, well, with the rise of social media, and we all know this, mm -hmm. but with the rise of social media, as anything else in life, the male voices tend to 
be the loudest, get the most play. And they're often, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say all of them, but they're often the voices that are putting out misinformation, are not promoting, let's just say, nice behavior towards dogs and people. So it was nice. It was refreshing to hear a, a, a man in a male's perspective that was so just a thousand percent for forced free positive reinforcement like in unapologetically like this is this is who i am i don't give a fuck what anybody says and this is how it's going to be and i just loved that me too I, it was it was really refreshing and i do hope that you know we'll have more male voices on this because i do think sometimes we can be a little bit of a tough crowd the force free and um i think sometimes like a a, a male trainer will come up on your social media not i'm not saying you specifically no, you, could say me. The, you could say me no 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 i'm, I'm genuinely <laughs> not i'm saying like the general the general public but like sometimes and, and myself included in this is we can like you'll be scrolling and a male trainer will come up and our brains are almost programmed to be like oh he's gonna be yanking the dog around right but I'm finding there are more and more men out there embracing positive reinforcement and their voice needs to be heard because unfortunately in the world we live in, deep sigh, deep sigh, um, they may be the ones to get through to these hmm, other people. Yeah. That like to call them. I wish they'd hear us out. I wish it didn't have to be that way, but that's the world we live in. Right. But I also just loved that. Loved loved Ken's take on things. Like he is positive reinforcement, but he brings his own spin to it. And like he was talking at one point about like going into stores with his dog and just announcing that he's there. This is what he's doing. And please leave us alone, you know? Okay. And so I love hearing how people make positive reinforcement their own, but it's still positive reinforcement. You know what I mean? Right. Absolutely. So, I mean, anything anything else stand out for you with, with Ken's um, interview that you want to just highlight real quick before we get into it? Well, I think... If you don't know Ken from social media, I think it's important to go into this with <laughs> your sarcasm meter, your sarcasm side of your brain open. Um, and because he is a somewhat sarcastic person, we joke, we have fun. We do, you know, skirt on some big topics um, like gender in this field so just know that he he's a he's a really good guy. His energy is right. amazing. Um, and just, you know, give it a listen. Really lean into right. it because I think he's got a lot to say. What about I you? I do too. I do too. I think he's the, I think he was a great um a great person to have on. I think he's kind of the same, you know, or um, maybe it's a New England thing, but mm -hmm. you know, what you see is what you get. And there's like he said, no sugarcoating things or, you know, I'm gonna get I'm gonna give it to you real. Um sometimes that comes off as a little gruff. I know for myself, like it does, but um but yeah, and I think that's something that's missing sometimes. Oh, for sure. for sure. I think it's definitely a New England thing. And obviously, we'll <laughs> extend this out to Jersey this one time. But I think us New England girls and this Jersey boy, we are, we were a little bit rougher around the edges. And that might not go over as well in some places. But you're going to get the truth from us. And I think that right. at the end of the day is the most important um, and I stand by, I stand by what I said towards the end that just from his energy alone, I would love to drink a beer right? and talk yep. about what's out in the universe with him. Cause I think he's got some good theories. All right. Well, 
let's get started. So, Nicole, tonight we are excited to have a really good guest. But what are what are you looking forward to in tonight's episode before we bring our guest in? Um okay, so I know this is like a, a new thing for us because this guest will be the first male guest that we've had. Um, and I'm really excited to get that perspective. And so I have a, I have some questions. I have some questions because I really, I want to kind of hear that, that side of things. So I'm excited. Great. Right. Well, then I will just give a little, a little preview and then we'll let him introduce himself. But our guest tonight is Ken and I not going to try to pronounce your last name. I feel like I could, but I'll probably butcher it. Um, he is a Karen Pryor Academy certified dog training partner. He is also a leg certified family member moderator, which I'm going to pick your brain about that one day because I'm very interested in that. Um, but he also has another job as a set director, set designer at Saturday Night Live, which that's going to just be a whole world of stories you have but welcome 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 to the show ken hi glad to be here um it's good to finally see you see everybody it's been so long um especially like we're just friends on instagram um, right well, yeah it's great to be here um i guess a little bit about myself you you're right I work mainly as a production designer in the film industry. I work on a TV show called Saturday Night Live. You might have heard of it. Um, a, little, a little show. A little show. I, um, I am the designer on one of the film units. There's actually three separate film units. So what we do is um, our pieces air when the show is the live show is changing sets. We do all like the fake commercials and fake videos and all that stuff. And if you happen to watch the show this weekend, I did the Mari Povich um, mock-up. Um, so that's what we do. There's absolutely nothing like it on the planet. And maybe other than working in an emergency room in a hospital, <laughs> what, what we do in 36 hours is completely mind boggling. Um, but then on the other side, I started a company called My Positive Pup, I guess about five or six years ago out of, from my dog, really because of my dog Scooter, who was terribly reactive. And there was just no way in the world I was going to let him go through life like that. And um, he is a completely different dog now. He is my pride and joy. He is, he is my absolute hero. He is the most improved dog on the planet. I mean, he really, really is an amazing dog. Um, but there you go. That's that's what he is. We we do beat dogs over the head and and we burn them and scold them <laughs> and we dominate them and all of that because oh, we don't like them driving, no, all of don't them. driving our cars away if they go to the door first. So, <laughs> there you go. That's kind of me in a nutshell. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's get the let's get the meat of this started. And of course, we'd like to start with our icebreaker question. So Ken. My question for you is, if you could be any cryptozoological animal, I'll say that again, cryptozoological animal, which would you be? A cryptozoo, I don't even know if I know what that is. Ah, um, you threw me so, so, so we're talking. <laughs> well, I say dog at this point. I would imagine yes. I would, I would want to be. I would want to be my dog. There's no question about that. Oh, that that's cute. That's cute. Yeah. A little, yeah. Another scooter, but a crypto zoo. Zo oh, I can't, can't even say it. it. <laughs> Forget it. Forget it. No, but we're talking like Bigfoot. We're talking about like Nessie or Chappie or you know the Chupacabra or not Scooby Doo. Um, not Scooby-Doo or, or um, Mickey Mouse or anything like that. No, um, no. The Loch Ness Monster, I think, would be kind of cool. I, I, I could dig the Loch Ness Monster. He's he's kind of a soul guy. You know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I could, I, I, yeah, I could dig the Loch Ness Monster. Yeah, the Bigfoot right. thing, I don't know about. Like, I never really bought the Bigfoot thing. Really? Yeah. I, oh, I'm total. I'm totally sold on Bigfoot. Yeah. Well, I'm I just, sold I, on I, all of them. Yeah. But Nessie, there's something like mysterious and like m mythical you know like you just you want to catch a glimpse 
Right, right. The big yeah. thing for me is just kind of like with all the trail cameras and like iPhones these days, like really we still have this footage when black and white and he's running through the woods. It's like that's the best we have. I mean, so it, it never really right. sold it for me. Cool. But yeah, all right. yeah, I would say messy. That all right. Yeah. Next all right. question. <laughs> Next tough one is <laughs> I like to go a little silly as does Nicole, but if you had to eat a crayon, what color would you oh choose? My God. <laughs> hmm. These are the hard hitting questions. Karen blue. is always in my head. Blue. 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 Okay. Yeah. Blue. That was Deep. color. Blue, blue. Is there a white crayon? It would also probably want a white one. I'm probably more yeah. white than a blue. Yeah, because oh. white reminds me of snow. I love snow. Oh, there my you whole go. life is about snow. I like the justification there. Yeah, yeah. And with climate change, this is a real drag. But my whole life is I built a house in Vermont for snow. Everything I lived my whole life around snow. I've created my whole career around skiing, and we're living in climate change, which is like you can't make it up. Right, right. Well, hopefully, where you're going in Vermont, there is some snow. We've got a bunch up here in the White Mountains, and my fingers are crossed for you that you'll get some snow. Great, wonderful. Back to the crayons, though. Can I just say that? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I used to. This is this is very telling. Um, I used to make crayon cookies wow did you eat them too i i did and you're I did. just really I was, admitting this i was full on i was full on love to eat the crayons i did not do the school glue like i'm old kind of just old gonna say paste, that you were kids in my class and used to just suck down the glue like crazy no. no i was crayons i would go out and i would melt my crayons out in the in the sun and make little like colorful cookies out of them wow. and they were good Wow. Hey, they kind of taste like Swedish fish. And all your brothers and sisters no longer are alive, and are the only <laughs> <all around>. <laughs> <laughs> you are a jealous child. We're very serious on this yeah. podcast. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. So now we're going to kind of get into the actual dog portion of it um so you had started to share a little bit about your experience with scooter your dog but how how did you really get pulled into this dog training world well you know it's funny when scooter was i guess about six seven months old we noticed that like pretty much every dog he'd come up to, he's a little puppy. You know what I mean? He'd jump at, he'd lounge at, he bit. He bit two dogs when he was, you know, very, very young. He was always growling at other dogs. And I was like, oh my God, like what's going on? This is crazy. Like, you know, I, I had no idea of any of it. And um, it became, you know, for most people who have reactive dogs, you know, I hate to say this, but embarrassing. Do you, you know what I mean? It's right. like, okay. you, you know, it's, it's, it's a common thing. So, when I had saw that, you know, realized how much, you know, it was all driven by fear and so on. I, I just, for me, it was a mission at that point. I, um, there was just no way in the world and I was going to let him go like this. Plus another thing too, like I find fascinating as a dog trainer is um, where we live in Hudson County in Hoboken, where my studio is, is just a mile away is the most third, the third most congested city in the United States of America. So what blows me away lots of times when I see other dog trainers talking about their reactive dogs and they're out in these fields and parks and like all this like spread out land. And it's like, man, give me those dogs. I'd have them fixed in no problem. We're not fixed, but you know what I mean? Yeah. I'd be able to, in no time. And like, it's so condensed down here. Right. And before, when I lived, we moved up to Jersey City about a year and a half ago, which is literally up the hill. Um, it was an enormous difference for both my dogs and myself because Hoboken on a typical walk, we'd pass 15 dogs Dang. every walk, every walk, I mean, every single wow. time. So can you can only imagine being a, a puppy who's horrified of other dogs. And um, so I couldn't move out of the, out of, you know, I work in the city. So um, that's when like the heavy counter conditioning went into big time, big, big, big time. And, I don't want to get lost on the thing, but like, um, but anyway, so that, that's, that's what it was. He, like he um, couldn't let him move like that. It just, it wasn't, it wasn't fair to him, to me, to my wife, right. um, to other dogs that he met, you know what I mean? Anything like that. So, but he's the best 
the best in the world now. Mm-hmm. The best. So then, so you get this, you get uh, this dog scooter, you get this puppy. Was he your first puppy that you had or? We had another dog, Mac, who was the love of my life. Um, he passed away when he was 15. Um, I lost, I couldn't breathe for, oh, mm-hmm. five, six months at all. Just completely lost all mm-hmm. oxygen. Um, and when we started thinking about other dogs, um, we we wanted to get a dog that was good in the cold. That was really important for us. You know, a, a dog who could handle the cold. So we wanted a rescue dog. We couldn't really find one. And then we kind of would Google and we came across this thing called Koiker, Koiker Hunch. And like, what, what is this Koiker Hunch dog thing? So we started doing a bunch of research on it. And like, oh, they're friendly. They like everybody. They're a good family dog. They adjust well. What bullshit that was. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, um, you know, we got screwed. It was like, what is going on here? Um, so, you know, environment plays everything in a dog. And um, so that's what happened. That's how we we, we, keep, we got Scooter. Um, yeah, that's, that's kind of what happened with him. He, um, I, w- I do want to say just real quick, you know, Scooter's now six. And there was a time you know, maybe three years ago, like I would never enter a store with Scooter. I would never even think of going in the store. And maybe it'd be Home Depot where I'd put him in a cart. And, you know, anybody came around like, get away with my dog, get away with my dog, get away with my dog. <laughs> so, you know, Scooter's newest thing now is he loves to go in stores. And um, I walk into the store and I make a very big announcement. Hi, my name's Ken. This is my dog, Scooter. Um, we would like to please just stay away. We need our, we need our space. Everybody looks at me like, freak show so it works out great so everybody gives us our space and scooter and i walk around the store he does tricks i'm actually going to post another one tomorrow on instagram i posted one a few days ago with him in another store we go to at&t stores and he does all these tricks now and everything and he does it because he wants to and right. it's it's really amazing three years ago when i would go in stores it was much more i was on top of him giving him treats you know what i'm saying making him feel calm yes. and all that time and effort that i put into that then now it pays off now because he walks in and he's cool. And it's, and it's like, he, the other thing that just blows me away with Scooter is like, you know, we could never walk past the dog. I mean, like he saw his, his, his trigger length was, you know, down the city block. He saw a dog, he'd be spinning. So now it's like, you know, we walk by dogs who are pulling and yanking on their leash and Scooter looks at me like, look at him, dad. Imagine that. I'm like, so yeah, much- give them your card. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. It's 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 amazing how you know the the motto of the company is love, praise, love, praise, reinforce, repeat, and it's it's the truth. It really is. Mm-hmm. Um, I never yelled at scooter. Mm-hmm. I never scolded yeah. scooter. Right. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that like to me, that's a very not only powerful statement, but a very important statement too, because. I'm sure, I mean, I, I know I've seen you on social media, um, but we're up against that mentality so much. So my question to you is how did you, how did you come into this with Scooter and just know that that's how you wanted to? to work with him because I wasn't about, I wasn't about to, to to um put elect probe him with electrical things and plug him into a wall and yank on his neck and hang him I just was never going to do that um I as a child was abused as a kid um I know what it's like um my father wasn't really all there for me though I will say this my father did the very best that he could um and I it's funny how life is because I know now for sure Mac died on the day that he died. So we could get scooter on the exact day that we got scooter. There's no question, question about my mind. I also know that what my father did when I was younger brought me to this point now with the knowledge and the patience and the love, you know what I'm saying? That has helped help, help me help other dogs. Um, I forgot to, I, I feel like I'm fearing off from your question. No. Um, no. So, um, so no, there was just, because of that, there was no way I was going to do any, uh, you know, you know, the whole season Milan bullshit. You, you know what I mean? Just, you just no. know. <laughs> it's a dirty word in this house. That is a dirty <laughs> word. But anyways, you know, um, that's a whole, that's a whole, whole other, other, other 
other thing. But, you know, one of the things I feel is though, you know, when I, when clients first come to me, you know, it's, it's myself and Lauren, who is our other train, who's my other trainer, who's wonderful. And she does all the happy dogs, you, you know what I'm saying? You know, I don't walk on a leash, this and that, you know, and all that stuff. And I do all the trouble dogs. And, um, I call them the, the introverted, the introvert dogs. And, you know, every session I start at, I start at, and I think they, they think I'm, I'm nuts. And I said, there's only two things that matter to your dog. That's it. Only two things on the planet. It's your job to make them feel safe and to use food appropriately. And they all go, oh my God, I had, I, I never thought of it that way before. And it's like, and it's true. I, and I, and I, and people obviously, well, how long do we have to use treats for? And I tell them when you go to work and you tell your clients or your boss, you never want to get paid anymore. You just want to do it for free. I said, it's simple as that, you know? And um, so anyways, that's like, those, I drifted there a bit, but that's what it's kind of like, that's what I did with Scooter. Do you, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you make you feel safe and you're a dog and dogs forage for food. And that's the most important thing that you do. And when you're barking and lunging and freaking out, you really are freaking scared to death. Right. And, um, you know, then that is the whole kind of conditioning thing. Right. And, and I, did, I mean, just, oh. go ahead. Go ahead, Karen. Oh, no, I was just going to say, and sometimes just breaking it down into small pieces like that is so important for our clients. And because sometimes we can go into this with such a overinflated sense of everything is important when it's just, you need to make your dog feel safe. That's, right. that's you have to there. engage your dog. You have to engage. Like so many dogs, it's just like when you're out, in, you're out in your walk, they're like, do you talk to your dog? Like, they're like, you know, you know what I mean? It's like, and then like, and I tell the other thing I say all the time, it's like, we spend so much time inadvertently reinforcing behavior we don't want. So much time in enforcing behavior we don't want, then more time reinforcing the behavior we do want. When was the last time you re- told your dog he's doing something good? Well, I, right. I don't, I, I don't know. No. No, but I think it's funny too because I mean I've just been reading up. I mean, I read all the time, but I've been reading more into this like negative bias that happens with people. But also, it you know there's more and more research. The more we get into like canine cognition and animal cognition and and neuropsychology and things like that, that you know. There's also this negative bias from dogs. And I feel like, Ken, what you just said was was really like honed in on that because the more we do pay attention to those negative things, right? Or, you know, that side of side of things, it becomes so much stronger than we ever intended it to be. And well, we're in a society of correction. That's all we do. Right, exactly. We just and it's like, constantly. <laughs> if it, you know, if you're in a, you know, I'm, I could hear somebody and then Karen tells me I'm great all the time. Thank you. But I mean, well, she tells me all the time, but still in the back of my head, I'm like, but there was that one person, one time that was like, you're a piece of shit. So now when I tell you to shut up, you're great. Don't listen to that but person. It's the same, but it's the same, you know, and I feel like a lot of times we get kind of stuck in that because we're so honed in on the punishment piece and the correction piece and they've got to do everything that we need them to do when what you're saying is they will do what we need them to do if they feel safe first and if they feel safe safe and another one i tell i tell everybody said you're walking out a dark alley and you're being mugged you don't suddenly stop and say i need a cheeseburger right now because the last thing you want to do is eat as you're being mugged or as you're being shot at or as you're being bombed, okay? So it's the last thing a dog wants to do when it's freaking out of its brain at the dog across the street because it's so scared. It, it is not taking treats. It just, it's the last thing it wants to do. So, you know, I think when I tell everybody that, they, they really kind of, oh, I, I never really like thought of it that way before. And it's like, you know, I use a lot of analogies. They seem to really work. And, um, so I, I think that, you know, finally gets through to people. And I also, too, it's like, you know, like, you got to stop looking at treats, like that whole thing that came up, oh, well, my dog, well, you know, will you dog do it without treats? Who give a shit if it will or won't? Do, do you know what I mean? It's like, yes, it, it's, right. you, you know, like my dogs have like really, really, really great recall. And all the stuff I post on Instagram, they do really, really great recall. I never, ever, ever set my dogs up or bring them into an environment where I know they're going to fail. So right. I don't 
let them off leash in those environments. Do, do you know what I'm saying? And it's like, and, and then it's like, oh, oh, you just don't let them off everywhere. No, I'm not no. going to let them off at Times Square, or I'm not going to let them <laughs> off in, you know, in certain places that, like, they, you know, there's just so many distractions around. I'm going to lose them. And you know, my dogs said dogs too. Like, is there are they 100 percent reliable? I'm not. Sure. Nothing me. is. Nothing is 100 percent reliable. Right. So, you know, but you expect it from a dog, really? Like, right. Right. And I think the other thing too is like you know a lot of the sessions that I teach, it's like it's, I'm shocked how I don't get many questions because I get, I get a lot of ahas, a lot of ahas. You know, I tell people to like, you know, when you go to a new location with your dog, and I said. And I said, you know, the dog's not paying any attention to you. It's just, you know, it's not paying attention. So let me give you an analogy of that one. I said, you know, I'm a huge Springsteen fan. So I'm going to drive over to the Meadowlands. We're going to go see Bruce. Okay. So me and my wife, and we parked the car. I get out of the car and I'm looking around, you know, making sure everything's good. And my wife's going, Ken, 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 don't even waste your time calling me until I turn to you. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's when you have my attention. So when you get out of the car and the dog wants to pull over there or go over there and so on, don't try to call them. Let them check out the environment. When they turn to you, now you've got the opportunity. Don't miss it. Yeah. And it really is that simple. And we humans, we overcomplicate everything. So why wouldn't we overcomplicate something? I also feel as though, too, that's hardest as trainer. It's like people don't know. Like they don't know, and it's our job to educate people. There are plenty of times when in a session, I'm sure it happens to every dog trainer, it's like, how did you not know this? And it's like, they they don't know it. You you know what I mean? And and they don't. So I try to not judge um, at all. Um, Sometimes it's really hard. Um, (laughs) But but like, I feel as though, you know, my positive puppy, we've made a lot of differences in a lot of life. And and I do feel as though are the tons and tons of dogs that we have trained, um, you know, we always lose a couple to the dark side, as I call it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'll see them on Instagram with the, with the shock of the prong. Very, 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 very few. But I knew when those people walked in. Oh, yes. Right. That doesn't you know. You yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. So... With all of that said and how much we all value positive reinforcement, I kind of wanted to steer this in a little bit of a different direction because when we were messaging back and forth about what we were going to talk about on this, you said something that I really don't think enough people know or even really think about, and that is that positive reinforcement works on everyone, not just dogs. So I was interested in kind of hearing a little bit more about your experience of how you use your positive reinforcement on your um, co-workers and your employees or however the structure is over there. My pride and joy, my human pride and joys. Um, <laughs> my wife and I at SNO, this is, I guess, my ninth season. This is Ken's 10th. And when we first started there, the film units really wasn't that big. We have hundreds of people who work in the film units now. And um, so the stagehands that we got never went left Rockefeller Center. They, like, they never went out to location. So they had no experience about it. So, the, you know, Kim and I came from a world of designing TV commercials and, and um, work, excuse me, working on movies and so on. So we were very um, trained over, over over many, many um, different mediums, so to speak, and how to like handle locations and so on. So when we started going out, my like, guys, they were dropping stuff. They, like when we have to go take a house and like bring furniture and they wouldn't wrap props up. You know, you have to like protect things. Like you, you have to do like you, there's a way you have to do this. And we were constantly getting barraged by the producers because the, so much damage was happening either to the house or the props that we're renting. So I said to Kim, I didn't really say to Kim, she kind of did it too. It's like, well, you can't say anything to these guys. I mean, a lot of these guys were like, you know, at that time were a lot, were like, it was, I guess, four or five of them that were Iraq vets. Um, And, you know, these are real union guys. So like, I'm not about to go up and say to these guys, look at Bozo, you know what I'm saying? Or like this or that. (laughs) What what I started doing is I would kind of jump in and they would see me like wrapping a prop or putting up a cardboard over here. So when they saw me doing it and they started doing it, every time they ever did anything good, I'd be like, way to go, way to go, Josh, way to go, Carl, way to go, way to go. I never put them down ever, ever, right. ever, ever. And I wouldn't give these guys up for the world right now. Um, and 
they will also tell you, I know this for a fact, unless they're breaking balls, <laughs> that um, I would, if I was to be stuck in a foxhole, I would want to be stuck in there with those guys. They, they have my back. I have their back. The other thing that Kim and I do is um, we give a lot of freedom to everybody. It's like, if you have an idea and what's how it should be, go for it. If you want to do this, go for it. Like, we, and if you mess up, we won't even care because you tried. And it's the same thing, like, you know, it's the same thing with the dog. It's like, you know, look, you tried. It's like, we're not going to stay on this. Let's just move on. You, you know what I mean? So right. our unit, there's three separate film units at Saturday Night Live. Each has its own designer, its own director, its own producer. There's, there's three units. And on a typical Friday when we all shoot, there's about 80 people between hair and makeup, um, wardrobe, scenics, grips, gaffers, you know, everybody on each crew. By far, we are the happiest crew. We we are just we are the we like, we just because we, we we know we're always there for each other. We always like compliment each other. We never ever ever tell each other if you messed up because we, like, we, we pick up for each other. You know what I mean? It's like right. I just I oh. can't even imagine because I'm just sitting here thinking. It sounds like <laughs> the amount of people that live in my small town are the amount of people you work with. And I'm like, I can't. I I always joke. I always say, you know, we get our scripts on Wednesday night at 10 o'clock. I design until, I don't know, two, three in the morning. I then send the shops to the drawing. The shop starts at 7 a.m. At 7 a.m. I'm on the phone with my crew, with, with the prop people. So is Kim. And then at 11 o'clock we go, to our stage at 66th street when we're at 66th street you know the heads of the departments come while those heads of the department there we have other people out shopping hair and makeup starting you know it, it, all of it it's just this whole big barrage of what's going on we shoot on friday mornings the show shoots on saturday night the show gets a whole nother they have thursday friday and all day saturday we basically have 24 hours to get it together to be on camera on Friday. Um, it's And it's unbelievable. And I always say, too, it's amazing it doesn't end up in a fist fight. It's just like, you know what I mean? With the amount of pressure we all have. But, um, but it's the same thing with the dogs. And I tell everybody, too, it's yeah. like, you don't work at Saturday Night Live. You don't have to worry about this. You know what I mean? It's like, you have all the time in the world. Who cares if your dog gets it? Who cares? Your dog can come back to you right away. Who cares? You don't have that dog that's ever going to run into a burning building and rescue anybody. Nobody in Hoboken has that dog. Nobody in Hudson County has that dog. Pretty much almost nobody on the East Coast has that dog. Do, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like, if your dog gets up, who gives a shit? Who cares? Exactly. You have God right. willing 12 to 15 years to work on things. and That's God willing. Yeah. Right. And, and, and why not save yourself some headache and keep your dog on a leash so you're not fighting with them over and, and deal with the more and deal with the more important things like having fucking fun right like, if i have to choose between having fun with my dog and living a happy and joyous and shout out back to season one to heidi and and a joyful life with my dog versus i'm gonna have to you know keep my dog on a leash sometimes like i'm gonna pick that anytime right and the other thing too is just to be fair to people though i don't want to say like and have people think like and especially like instagram other than yours you know but karen yours yours is really really good you're very honest um like um you know i post most of the time best of you you know what i'm saying like do my dogs drive me crazy i wanted to shoot jersey (laughs) yesterday i was like this is (laughs) the worst walk in the world this is just a night i can't take take jersey i can't take it anymore take her it happens but it's like you know that's part of life. And, you right. know, another thing too, is I tell my clients, you know, pretty much um, your dog's intelligence on a really good day, you know, the sun's part, the clouds are part of the sun shining down on your dog. You know, it's an intelligence, if it's lucky, is equivalent to a two, two and a half year old dog. If it's lucky, your dog ain't never getting up and making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It just, it just ain't happening. So like, if you've hung around with toddlers before, wake up. <laughs> A normal toddler. We're not talking like a Mozart, a two-year-old right. Mozart. Right. Right. Like yeah. a normal toddler. Although, how sweet would it be if our dogs could make us like a fluffernutter sandwich or something? You know, that would be oh, fluffernutters. Oh, yes. Yes. So yes. But no, yes. I, I, like I think I think your point is so important because, like, even today, for example, I was home. I had some downtime, and I asked you. I was like, 
Do you want to go into my facility and do training? Or do you want to go out and just walk on the trails that, with the fresh snow? And he was like, are you, are you serious? We're going out for that walk. So it doesn't always, right. yes, there is a time and a place for the more regimental training. And yes, we have to go through those steps sometimes, especially with reactive dogs to get to that light at the end of the tunnel. But it doesn't have to be everything you do with your dog. I don't know how many times in my sessions I tell my, I was saying it to my session today, I want you to still enjoy your dog. I don't want you to be so caught up in worrying that right. the timing isn't right or, oh, my dog jumped on me and I accidentally pet them. Like, it's not the end of the world. Enjoy right. your dog. Right. right, right. No, that's perfect. Right. Exactly. Like, the other I tell people too is like, you know, like if your dog lunges and barks, you just move on. Just, just, exactly. just, just, just move on. Like, you know, you know, people are going to look at you like, yeah, look at the poor guy with the bad dog. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, that's how people look at you. And it's like, I'd rather be known that than something else. So, so it's, it's, it's not so bad. And so, yeah, you're right. It's, 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 it's hard to take all with a grain of salt. I, I know how hard it is and I don't want to minimize it at that. Though you have a mission now, you, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a mission, you know, it's, yeah. um, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But um yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah. kind of looking at high notes for other stuff I maybe wanna yeah. get up about. Um no, that's like a, a lot of like I said, it's 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 oh, this is what I I forget what trainer wrote this. Leslie McDavid. Yes, yes. I make everybody read this in the session. Patterns are safe because they are predictable and repetitive. Anxiety is about not knowing. Everybody goes, oh, right. and I was like, yes, it's so true. It's so true. And I tell people to also too, I said, so however old you are, you're lucky if your dog, like you said, lives any more than 10 years, you know what I'm saying? And you've been on Prozac and, and, and Wellbutrin and everything else for 40 years or 30 years, whatever it is, you see a psychiatrist, you know, every other week or whatever it is, and you want your dog to just get it. It's, it's truly exhausting sometimes. But I, because... think, I, think, I think too, it's like, but it's true. It's, it's like, right. and once again, I'm not trying to, I don't say that to bum my clients out, but I say oh. that to have them come to the realize, oh my God, that, that that's right. I mean, you know, you, your, your expectations, we really need to bring our expectations under wraps, right. you know? Absolutely. And I don't think you're diminishing at all. I think it's one of those things that we have the same conversations mm -hmm. so many times yeah. that it can become a little like, oh, this again. But I don't think you're diminishing it at all because that's, it's just the way it is. It's, we've got to be the ones to help people realize that right. you're the only help your dog is going to get at the end of the day. And either you right. make their life better or you just stick with the status quo. Right. And that's the heartbreak. It's the, it's the status quo. I mean, it takes work. It doesn't just happen. Like, it, you know, the amount of work that I put into a scooter, I mean, it, I mean it's exhausting. I, I became a certified dog trainer because of my dog. Right. Do, do you know what I mean? I never, like, I never, that was never thought of my life. You, you know what I mean? I was like, oh, going to become a dog trainer, you know? Which, so if I could ask a question about that. Yeah. So from kind of, this is a little bit hard and there's a lot of pressure to put on you, but from the male oh, no, It's fine. You can't do it. You're not going to pressure me too much. Go on. I work at SNL. I know. I was just going to say, after hearing about that, I don't think there's, this will be enough pressure. But kind of from like the male perspective, why was, because like we know, this is a female dominant industry, especially- well, I have something to say about that too. And I want to say something about that too. I, I feel as though- how do I say this without going into the Barbie movie? Um, and my name is Ken. Um, it is dominated by women. It is dominated by women. I um, massively dominated by women. And what I feel as though as a male is that um, there's a lot of angry women trainers out there certified also. And, and it kind of is like, it kind of, it kind of bums me out a bit. And, and the other thing too, that I've noticed too, with a lot of the women trainers that I know and read about and stuff like that is this, how do I say this? Not calling out mm -hmm. um, like 
the season Milans or the prong callers and the shock callers and stuff like that, that we're, we're going to take our own path and we're not going to bring mm-hmm. that in. Mm-hmm. I think that's incredibly wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm walking down the street, my wife is kills me all the time. If I see a prong calling a dog, I go right up and start talking to the people. Mm-hmm. If I see a shock on I go right up and start talking to the people and I've gotten in arguments and the whole thing. And they have, I have been sworn at endlessly and all that. But this is the thing. When that guy goes home, when that woman goes home that night, they thought about it. At least they thought about it. To not take it, do you know what I'm saying? To do that drives me crazy. That's the only thing that I would have to say what I have seen. As far as everything else, as far as male and female, I don't really feel as though it's that different. You know what I mean? It's like it's, the training goes. I think the same concepts are there. Is that is that what well, you mean? Yeah. No, I just meant like why was it's... it important for you to explore the certification? Why was it if you wanted that? in your back pocket. I mean, I'll, I'll go even deeper, Ken. We can go even deeper because I, I mean, I, number one, I fully agree with you as yeah. that semi-angry woman um, that has been doing this for quite a long time. Um, I agree with you that we should be more vocal about things because acquiescing and, you know, standing in the in the shadows and saying well that's just how they do it has not worked it hasn't worked in the past decade it hasn't worked in the past two decades it hasn't worked in the past three decades and so yes i 1000 percent agree with you that you know there's a few need to be groups that i have vocal. yeah there's a few groups that i belong to you know like on facebook and whatever and just so and so that i've had to get off because i've either been thrown out you know what i mean just <laughs> bring it up because you can't <laughs> bring it up it's like what do you mean bring it up it exists like what are you even talking about but um that drives me nuts that drives me nuts um but i'm I'm told all the time that i'm i'm too mean i'm too mean to people and while i i agree i agree i i i'm hard to take and hard to handle sometimes but I, i will i will be there for anyone that wants to learn and wants to reach out and and wants to say hey well how would you do it and if you're sincere about that i will stop what i'm doing and i'll help and we'll have a discussion joyce how many how many prong callers i have at my studio for going up to people and say i'll give you a free lesson if you give me a prong caller no right yeah i have quite a few but we can't we can't just sit sit back and not say things because it makes us feel uncomfortable Right. But I, mean, I don't I, pick fights with them, but I try to educate them. And I've been told several times, F off, get away. You know what I mean? Hold yeah. on minutes. Like, oh, you got me going now. You, you know? So. I mean, for, for me, though, kind of where I wanted to go with that question is that the difference that I see, and again, from my perspective, is that there there isn't always the se- second guessing, right? I am constantly second guessed. Even though I have a lot more education, I have a lot more certifications, I have accreditations, I have all this and that. But when I say something, it's, are you even a trainer? Right. Oh, well, are you even a trainer? Well, you haven't worked hard dogs or you haven't worked working dogs. And I'm like, well, here, here's the pictures of me doing police work. So there's my working dog for you. We didn't just right. play, we actually worked. But you know, that's the difference that I see. And that's kind of what I wanted to really push you into answering is on the other side of that, like, do you also see that happening to women? Like we're, we're questioned, we're judged, we're like not taken seriously. Oh, of, course, yeah. of course I do. Of course I do. Of course, of course I do. This is the United States of America. I hate to say it. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> you know, as a second class citizen. I mean, right. I, you know, I'm not saying that seriously. I think it's oh, heartbreaking. No. I think it's heartbreaking. I will say this though. I feel as though women, because of women, have made positive reinforcement much more accessible. I feel as though women have really brought the forefront of positive reinforcement to you know, just to all new heights. I, I, I totally agree with that. And I'm not saying that as, as, as judging or anything like that. But I do feel regardless of male or female, if you see somebody zapping the dog in the park, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, I, I'm not going to just let the dog get yeah. zapped without getting I, my peace of mind. I've pulled over 
in Weymouth, by the way, I've pulled <laughs> over and yelled at somebody else. Walking down that, my life is like, don't do that to your dog. God, we don't pass any dogs. I love when I, so I'm very much the same way, maybe not as active because there's a lot less people where I am but I can count on my on both hands like the amount of wives who have either after a session or in an email afterwards like said to me thank you for standing up to my husband for me because like I can't get through to him so like we have to be that voice regardless of gender we have to be standing firm in what we believe in because some people can't stand up to their significant other and and if we can and we can make their lives easier then that's a win for me you know what i mean i find fascinating is like you know lauren who is my the other trainer has when she first started this shattered me in a bunch of sessions and my wife too hears me talking on the phone and she's been in there also too she's like oh my god i can't believe the way that you talk to people and i said what do you mean she goes well you're just so brutally honest it's like yeah, no shit. You know what I mean? It's like, and I am brutally honest. And and I think sometimes that makes people step back a little bit, but it's, it's, I feel as though it, it's, I'm not doing it to be mean. You know what I'm right. saying? I'm doing it to be brutally honest. And um, I think it's harder for women, unfortunately, to be brutally honest lots of times. Um, but once again, I think everything that women are doing God bless, God bless, God bless, God bless, God bless. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to screw this into like, I just not thought like, hey, there's not a lot of males that are certified. So I think well, it's really cool. Well, that's well, that's well, well, and no. too, it's, um, you know, you would ask me also too, like, why did I, get, why did I want to get certified? And it's like, well, I'm not going to a doctor who's not an MD. And Exactly. Um, Thank you. I just, I didn't know enough about it. You know what I mean? <laughs> At the time, I just, and when I, when I went into Karen Pry, I had a really, really hard time. The first, um, half of the class because it was it was hard for me to grasp it and understand it because it just just really was and you know with scooter you, you know what i mean it was it was very stressful for him we, the the weekends we had to spend out there were very very hard and i could see it was hard on him um but you know at the end of it all when you had to go up in front of everybody and do your 10-part chain and all that stuff everybody knew that scooter was reactive and all that and like you know everybody was very respectful making a lot of noises and giving us our space and all that stuff and um we went up and did that thing and scooted and nailed it no one clapped everybody cried and Aww. it was just like you know what i mean people had tears rolling on their eyes and they just wanted to and just like wait a yeah. oh, scooter you know what i mean well, it was just because they didn't want to jump up and down you know what, right. they didn't even know what the hell's going on <laughs> but also too like that was um you know really 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 you know, emotional and huge. And, and I was glad I went through it. And he'll tell you now he, he is too. Um, but that was why I, it was important for me to be, I, I needed the knowledge. Like, right. You know, I like to jump into, you know, jump into stuff, you know. Um, I also, not just veer off. I know you were talking about um, Kim Brophy with um, the legs. Oh, um, yeah. The FDM. Yeah. Um, so, uh, when I read Meet Your Dog, I went, oh, my God, what a great book. Holy cow. Wow. Then I found out that Kim Brophy had this course, which is really a lecture, however many hours it is. I was glued to it, glued to it, because I felt as though what Kim Brophy did does and what I did without even knowing Ken Brophy is I tried to make it layman's terms. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it really right. could stick with people. Like I never used the word antecedent in, in my training right. sessions, like ever. <laughs> I mean, you know what I mean? Like, are you great? <laughs> and I never used, you know, counter conditioning either. It's like, this is what you could do when the dog's scared and this is how we do it. And I felt as though her book in her class was really, really eye opening, especially in helping me be a better trainer and it really explained to people like how like you have to understand like especially like down here like every time you turn and go to a different block um it's like going to a new planet for the dog and like you have to be aware of that you have to constantly like understand how they learn like i spend a lot of time going over that with people like you know how, how they learn and right. you know the environment and like you know your dog was bred for this you have a husky in hoboken do, do you know what i mean and it's like it really made a big help with that and the other thing too is i tell all my clients read the book Thanks. and the ones who do call me up and say oh my god 
Oh my god, it's really, it really was super, super eye, and especially for like, you know, I've, I know other people have gone through college for dog behavior and animal behavior and got all sorts of degrees. You know, I went for film school, so for me, I kind of felt as though it all kind of wrapped it up, you know. But really, really in, enlightening, very, very enlightening. I, I have nothing but, um, you know, respect for her. Um, I also have big, big, big respect for um, Emma Parsons from. Um, mm -hmm. Karen Pryor, she did with a clip, clip two, what is it? Um, yeah. Yeah. So she's a, she's a Karen Pryor one. And she had, um, when I was going to Karen Pryor, I called her up because I was didn't see her. And I said, I told her about Scooter. And she goes, Ken, you know, on the day you win, she goes, the day you can walk Scooter down the street and hold a cup of coffee. And I was like, and I chuckled. And I do walk down the street now and I can hold a cup of coffee. And, um, but like, I'm, met her for the first time last year it was she was teaching up in vermont and we went out to dinner and it was like wow this is like sitting down with a female version of bruce springsteen this is really, really <laughs> cool you, you know what I mean? like, you know it was amazing like you know here's right. this woman who's so well respected in the industry and she also has a video out i forget if you google her it's some lecture she has it's two hours on reactivity and i remember having watched that when way back when i guess going through karen Pryor, and i was like Oh my God, it was another one that just like the lights go off. You know what I mean? Like right. how it happens. So, um, see, there are two of my biggest dog training fans are women. So, you know, mm. yeah. and of course, season uh, one, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we ask any more questions, I just want to be um, considerate of your time. I know you had originally said just yeah. you were available for an hour. Do you have a few more minutes for us to? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay. Fantastic. All right. So okay. I have a question from our audience, and I say audience very loosely. <laughs> it's really just one person that that is, is a consistent <laughs> we listener. We're not, <laughs> we're not we're not less than our level yet, but we no. have more than our one, our one fan. <laughs> our one fan listener. I was actually going to send you something today. <laughs> <laughs> um. But the question that we had that um that came in was, what are three life lessons that you have learned from working with dogs? Love. I mean, you kind of touched love. on, but love, 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 love. Praise, 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 praise. Reinforce, reinforce, reinforce. Simple and repeat. And repeat. <laughs> and repeat. Right. Sure. Honestly, it's like you know. I work with a lot of tough dogs, you know what I'm saying? I re really, really do. Like, um, and it always brings a tear to my eye to, to, when I hear, you know, you can go on Instagram, you can see like the people in the reviews and stuff like that. And it's like, so-and-so did this today. So-and-so did that today. And it's like, yeah, because you loved them, you praised them and you gave them Swiss cheese. Do, do you know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's, it's, and you practice and you practice and that's how it is. And it's like, that's the thing that taught me. It's like, that works with everything, everything, everything. Right. We, the whole world needs to do have way more of that right now. Agreed. It's just, it's, it's heartbreaking. It's, 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 it really is. And I wish Swiss cheese could solve it. I will work for Swiss right. cheese. Right. For sure. right. Scooter works for Swiss cheese big time. <laughs> So Jersey, I don't want to say, I should have talked about Jersey. Jersey, my aunt, my mini Aussie is the greatest thing in the world. She's super smart. She's amazing. She's just like my wife. Social, social, social. She's an extrovert. It drives you freaking crazy. <laughs> um, but she's the best. She just is really, really, she has a hard time at night because she can't see real well. And no dog can see really super well at night. And it's like, you know, up where we are in Jersey City, it's like um, stray cat society and it's oh my gosh it's like, <laughs> look at the cats you know well it sounds like you're due for a visit up into the great north woods where it's somewhat calmer and yes. more yeah. well, soon enough few more days few more days I well, just, want to just look at my before you hang out. I just, yeah, I just oh no, man, no, no rush I'm just trying to be cognizant of your oh, time no, I, have some, I have a little bit of time um no, that's kind of it. I mean, that really, that's 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 it's kind of a nutshell of my positive. The other thing thought, too yeah. is, if you ever think of something else you want to add into this, we can schedule another one and get you back in here. So it's not mm -hmm. the end of the world. Yep. But with yeah, that sure. said, though, how can our listeners, our as the Nicole pointed out, our one, our one listener, we have more than one. <laughs> Calm down. Well, me and you don't count. Though. Me and you don't count, Karen. 
<laughs> but how can our many, many listeners find you? <laughs> you can't. Um... <laughs> That's fine, too. You don't have to provide anything. <laughs> well, you know, we're on the web, mypositivepup.com, and um, on Instagram at, you know, mypositivepup, and I... Um... That's all I'm telling. That's it. That's right. oh, perfect. And then yeah. before we go, did you have any questions for us? Oh, God, that's a whole nother show. I, I <laughs> do have a couple questions for you. you. Your dog. I have to, both your dogs, like, amazing, amazing, amazing job. Like, what's been going on? And, and, I, and I also, like, you, like you, it was perfect. You did it perfect. You killed it. She did. You absolutely killed it. Your she patience did. was amazing. Your love was amazing. Your reinforcement was amazing. Killed it. Killed it. Killed it. Killed it. And so it's like with, with Scooter in Jersey, you know, for weeks we had a double gate. You, you know what I'm saying? It's, you know, weeks. Oh, yeah. Weeks. Yeah. They're the best friends now. They play with each other. They they sleep together. You know, the whole thing. It just takes time. It takes time. I, 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 will will say, I will say, though, I would, I mean, I truly like am in awe of Karen like all the time. Mm. Um. <laughs> But I will say that it actually does segue into something that you said, Ken, about expectations, because a lot of times, Karen, I know that you went into this with, you say you didn't have any expectations, and I know that you didn't, but also I know that that wore on you, that it wasn't, it wasn't going the way you had pictured it in your head, and that expectation war on you more than I think you realize. It did. I even you, caught that on Instagram a couple of times. I was saying right? she's, burnt, she's burning out. She's yep. got to stick to it. She's got to stick to it. She's got to get through it. And you did. And I think yeah. one of the things that is very important that Ken brought up is that we can help clients with understanding those expectations. And when we do that, we also lighten them up. So we help their dogs, but we help them in the process because having those expectations, whether they're conscious or unconscious, they weigh heavily on us. They oh, really yeah. do. And so I think that's that's my kudos to Karen that she. I agree. I agree. Amazing, amazing job. <laughs> and, I, and I also think you know one of the things too is I say also, the only dogs I've ever trained in my life are my dogs. I've never trained another dog. I train people not to train their dogs. Knowledge is power. I mean, it's as simple as that. Knowledge is power. And it's like, it's wonderful when I ask people, I like, turn around and go, get any questions? No. <laughs> you, know, you, know. Like, you will, you will. Yep. Right. <laughs> Let it sink in. Let right. it sink in. But no, I mean, this is great, Ken. Thank you so much. And mm -hmm. I really hope that we can have you on again because I feel like I would love to. It was, it was so it much was... in there that we can. Yeah. I just love your out. energy so much. Like, I just, like, I want to hang yep. out, I want to drink a beer. And just talk about everything in the universe. We'll it's have to go skiing. We'll have to get Karen to go skiing. Yeah. I fall down the mountain as long as you're willing to laugh at me <laughs> as I go by. I'm in. You gotta ski. You gotta ski. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, I, I kid you not, my whole life, and one of the reasons why I'm in the film business is because I could be freelance and not have a regular job so I could ski during the week. That's the nice. truth. Guys, listen, thanks a bunch. Really good. Thank you. Um, thanks so much. Appreciate it. And all for the dogs. Thank you. Bye. All right. Take care. Bye. Well. You crushed it. I was trying yeah. to get you to cry. I was close. <laughs> I, I did not. I mean, every single fucking word I said, Karen. I do. Well, I just wasn't expecting a question and answer time to turn into that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it I was so relevant though it was so relevant but I think too like something and I, I didn't quite get a chance to say it because I was trying to keep it together but I just feel like where we started the conversation with Ken talking about like negative expectations you said it much better than that <laughs> um, but how <laughs> we like to focus on the negative as humans I feel like that's what I did with Rosie and CJ I focus so much on the negative outcome it's never going to happen it's all that stuff and then you know I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel so right. you guys were were spot on with there that we as humans we go to the negative first right absolutely and I feel like that you know kind of what Ken was saying about you know 
we need to give people this knowledge and we need to make this knowledge more accessible to them in ways that people can understand it because we can't just throw sciencey jargon at people especially people that are like in the throes of a problem yes right? like we were talking before we started recording like if i'm gonna have if i'm gonna have the time to sit down and like pull out google and have my thesaurus and my my dictionary with me then i could i can handle a lot more heavy yeah. information but generally the point at which we're seeing these clients they're not at that point they're at the they're at their own threshold and so you know not only can we help them by like what he was saying being able to break down these concepts in a way that people can better understand and doing that through either little anecdotes or by changing our language a little bit and making it more accessible to them but understanding that even though people say they don't have an expectation or they aren't telling us that what they're expecting out of our interactions with them or out of our trainings with them, that there is always that little expectation subconsciously or unconsciously, and that that can really cloud and muddy and create a source of negativity that we sometimes don't attend to if, yeah. if we don't give it enough credit. And I think... I just two quick points on my side that like, I think I remember there were so many times and even to this day, sometimes when I'm on Instagram or social media or whatever, and I'm comparing myself to other trainers, which we all do, we all compare ourselves. Um, and you know, you see people talking about like, Oh, we have to explain the ABCs to, to our, to our clients. And we have to help them understand the antecedent and all this stuff. And I go, I've never done that. Am I failing my clients? What What am I doing wrong? But I do it in a way, like Ken was saying, like with analogies, I explain right. it in a way that isn't this classroom, sterile, right. ABC version. And there's certainly clients out there or people or whoever that learn that way and pre-process but like you're saying when you are in the throes of it you're not looking for the synonyms or the adjectives or the whatever you're just looking for right. that hand as cheesy as it sounds but that hand to reach out and pull you through it right so i mean i'm a, i am i'm on google scholar all the time you know that but yeah. I mean, there are times i know when i just need a bullet list Give me a freaking bullet list. I don't need the whole, you know, three pages of, you know, research. I just need a bullet list. And I feel like a lot of times that's lost in translation when we're working with, with clients because we do have that knowledge and we want to impart that knowledge. But at the same time, it's like we have to make sure they're open to receive that knowledge in that way. Um, and a lot of times they're not. And so we have to do better at figuring out more accessible ways to get, there, to get there with them. I just feel like if you took, or if we could find a way to take your brain with the Google <laughs> Scholar and my brain with the bullet points and smush it <laughs> together, and it would be perfect. You know, By our I'm... powers combined. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> oh my god yes no because like when you're like when you sent me all that research that you did I was just like I'm yeah, dumb yeah, no. <laughs> like, I was like yeah. whoa like your research skills and like I am blown away constantly and I'm like I wish I was her I wish no. I was her mm -mm. You but don't. I read the abstract. I'm like, that's good. That counts. Right. You're like, if it's not in the abstract, then I just move along. Yeah. Exactly. No, but or, I mean, I think or, that's good. Yeah. Or if I'm like really pumped about it, then I'll read the whole thing. But for the most part, I'm like, just give me the abstract. Just let me. The, the what was that? Um, oh shoot. Uh, like when you had to do a book report in school, but you didn't want to read the book. Oh, cliff uh, notes. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Exactly. Give me that. <laughs> Give me that. So like, I just, I'm just the, I watched the movie version of the book. 
right? Like that's two hours, one and done. Right. (laughs) I don't even need to read it. I'll just watch the movie. And then you you do your report on the movie and it's completely different. And like, you know. That didn't happen. That's not a thing. But no. But seriously, I mean, I, I am very proud of you. I am in awe of you. Um, what you do every day, honestly. You're really, if you're really trying, you really want me to cry. No, 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 I don't. I do. I do. I do. But no, I mean, I, I'm serious. I'm serious because even just, even just what Ken said about you being real on the internet, right? Like real in your reels. Um, <laughs> That takes a level of not just vulner- vulnerability, but it takes a level of badassness to do that and to and to do it unapologetically. And I just I'm so proud that I made you become my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I forced you. Yeah, I forced you. Well, I don't know how to happen like that. I was just like, oh, okay. Oh, you live close. I'm going to come up there. What's your address? And I'm like, no stranger danger. Here, weird person on the internet. Here's my address. (laughs) Mom and dad, I don't do that often. Don't worry. No. Um, Just just random people. I just, I don't know. I... I know it might sound egotistical or whatever, but, like, I do pride myself on being honest online. And and I'm not, I'm not trying to be, like, there's so much, you know, it's all the, the highlight reels and I don't want to be, like, that's not what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to use social media as it's intended to show my life and to not just be giving people the good or the dressed up version because that's not what it is. And I get told all the time, like we've talked about in the past that, you know, if I just changed this or that about my social media, I'd be so much bigger and more popular. But at the end of the day, I don't want to change who I am. I want to be able, like, like when we recorded our season two intro, I want to be able to say, I don't wash my hair every day. (laughs) And not the care that somebody's going to be like, oh, you know, right. because that's mm-hmm. that's who I am. And if I'm not showing up like that online where people are going to find me and choose to work with me or not, then they come in and they get a different version. No, right. no, thank exactly. you. That's not what I'm about. But so right. and I and I know we've said it before and I know it kind of turns into love fests for us, but I love that about this. <laughs> um, but when you say those things, it. It means so much to me because I do look up to you and I respect Thank so you. much your work ethic, who you are as a human being at your core, and just, you know, everything about you. So it means it means so, so much. Um, I do think we should probably start a poll or like a bet of how many episodes in season two does Karen cry in? <laughs> <laughs> We could do that. I could put that on. Put that on there one time. Fantastic. (laughs) And with that, we hope you enjoyed the conversation. And please don't forget to give your dog a biscuit from us. Until next time.